Hello, my name is Grant Carroll, and today I will be discussing the U.S. trade deficit. During my presentation, we'll talk about kind of what a trade deficit is, what causes a trade deficit to happen, the history behind the U.S. trade balance, and kind of things that led up to the U.S. trade balance slipping into a deficit. And then finally, we'll wrap it all up by talking about if the trade deficit is a problem in an economy or not. So starting out, what is a trade deficit? Um, a trade deficit is basically going to occur when a country is importing more goods and services than it is exporting. Um, this relationship between imports and exports is a great way to measure a trade balance in an economy. However, to really understand why a country is running a trade deficit, it'll be best to look at um, the relationship between national savings and national investments. National savings is basically just going to be how much money an economy has altogether, and national investment is going to be how much money that economy is putting forward to growing their economy, whether that be building new infrastructure or just investing in companies in general. Um, what you'll see, though, is national investments can be greater than national savings. So the government is making all these purchases to grow their economy, they're investing in their economy. However, the amount of money that they have saved um, is not enough to finance these investments. When things like this happen, an economy is gonna be forced to go and borrow from abroad um, so that they can continue to finance these investments and continue growing their economy. Um, so you can see here, if we take a look at the US trade balance, um, in the 1960s up to the late 1970s, the US trade balance was actually running a surplus, meaning that we were exporting more goods and services than we were importing. Um, it wasn't until the 1980s where we can see the trade balance actually slips into a trade deficit. Um, you can see since then, we've made attempts to rebound back towards that surplus level, but ultimately we have continued this uh, trade deficit trend and uh, we are actually still experiencing a trade deficit to this day. So starting out in the 1980s, where it all began, uh, President Reagan started out by signing tax cuts. This is going to significantly decrease national savings, mainly because when he signed these tax cuts, Congress was not able to keep a, uh, uh, to also decrease the amount that the government was spending. Um, because of this, the government was getting less money from taxes, but spending the same amount and national savings fell. Um, this caused this gap between national savings and national investments to, to come into play and the trade balance slipped into a deficit for the first time. Then in the 1990s, there was an attempt to make it right. Um, the, the government wanted the trade balance to get back up to that level of surplus and uh, they, they plan to do this by um, doing tax increases, which President Bush and President Clinton both did during their terms. Um, this increase in taxes increased national savings, and in turn, that gap between national savings and investments uh, narrowed, and the trade deficit did begin to rebound and move back towards surplus. Um, However, in the late 1990s, there was a boom in information technology, and this actually rapidly increased investment, and um, just this work that the increase in taxes were doing to increase national savings wasn't actually able to keep up with this rapid increase in investment. And for this reason, that large gap between national savings and investment um, was, was still very evident and that trade balance um, just began to, or just continued to slip into a trade deficit. Um, in the 19, or in the 2000s, President Bush, Bush started out by signing tax cuts. Um, just like in the 1980s, this significantly decreased national savings. Um, this might have not been a super bad thing, however, with the attack of 9-11. Um, the government was kind of in a panic. Um, they were spending a lot of money on national security and their military, and 
with these tax cuts, we just didn't have the money to be uh, to finance all of this extra spending. And for this reason, we had to borrow from abroad and that, that trade deficit really sank. Um, we actually reached an all time low in national savings in 2006 and an all time high in the trade deficit uh, in that same year. Uh, in the late 2000s, however, with the recession happening, um, the, the residential market um, was on a steep decline and less people were investing their money into residential, which is actually a very large part of national investment. Um, because of this, and that investment level dropped um, down closer to that level of national savings and um, we were able to get that trade deficit to rebound a little bit. Um, however, since about 2013, 2014, the tr national savings and national investments have been on an about, about an equal uh, increase and have stayed relatively constant. Um, and for this reason, the trade deficit hasn't really moved a whole lot since 2013 or 2016. Um, so as you can see here, now that we know um, the way that savings and investment play a big role in the U.S. trade balance. Um, we can see that here in the 1960s and 1970s, savings and investments remained very close to each other. And at times, savings were actually more than investment, meaning that we were running that surplus. Um, however, in the 1980s, you can see that this large gap due to the tax cuts um, caused this national savings to drop, investment stayed high, and this gap between the two um, very much graded. Um, then you can see there was an attempt in the 90s to make things right. We started to rebound. However, um, the national savings just continued to drop in the late 90s and into the 2000s. And this really increased the trade, bud or the trade deficit. Uh, so keeping this chart in mind and remembering kind of where these big gaps in savings and investments in the 80s and the 2000s are, we can take a look at our actual trade balance again. Um, so you can see those big gaps in savings and investments directly correlate with these big peaks in, in the deficit. Um, so uh, now knowing kind of what a trade deficit is, um, what causes a trade deficit, and kind of the things that went on in the United States during the 1980s, 90s, and 2000s that caused this trade deficit to occur. Um, we can talk about if the trade deficit is a problem or not. Um, there are many different opinions on this uh, topic. Uh, some experts say that if we continue down this road that we're going on, that this trade deficit is going to prove very counterproductive for um, our economy. Uh, other experts say that because the U.S. economy is so strong and foreign governments have a lot of trust in us, um, they're going to be continuing to lend us, lend to us, and uh, it won't really be a problem until these foreign governments decide, okay, you know what, we're no longer going to be financing the United States' investments, um, and at that point, the United States will just have to start paying its way in a world economy. Um, however, there is a view that I find to be uh, more true than the others. Um, I believe that the trade deficit is not the actual problem itself, but a symptom of the problem. And the real problem has to do with national savings. Um, uh, as we talked about today, one of the big things that caused trade def the trade deficit to happen um, are these major tax cuts that decrease national savings. And when this decrease in national savings isn't met with an equal decrease in investment, um, that trade deficit is just going to keep dropping. Uh, so really, I think the best way to um, kind of counteract this, this trade deficit would be to increase national savings and try and bring national savings back up to that level of investment um, so that we can rebound back towards that surplus level. So uh, I hope you learned something about the trade deficit. Um, thank you for watching.